In this video, I'm going to be making a new cross-cut sled for my table saw. I made my old sled a couple of years ago now, and it's not as accurate as it should be, so it's time to make a new one. I want my new sled to fit inside the mobile base of my table saw, along with my taper jig and frame spline jig. The opening measured 53 centimeters wide, so that was how wide I needed my sled to be. I searched through my sheet materials and found a piece of melamine, which I'd use for the base. I measured out 53 centimeters and used a framing square to mark a line. Then I made a cut from one side on the miter saw, rotated the workpiece and made the second cut. Then I took off a couple of inches off the back side of the sled base to give me the depth I wanted for the sled. Next I measured the mitre slots on my table saw with a pair of calipers. I'd need to cut two runners to fit inside these slots. The slots measured 19.5mm wide by 10mm deep. So I ripped a spare piece of sapili to 8mm by 19.5mm. It was a nice tight fit in the slot with no side to side play and it moved backwards and forwards quite easily. I chopped the length of sapili in half to give me two runners. Then I stacked a few washers in the slots to lift the runners flush with the table surface. I applied hot glue onto the top of the runners and then placed the sled base on top, with one side pressed up against the table saw fence to keep everything square. Then I drilled pilot holes through the runners and into this. Then I drilled pilot holes through the runners and into the sled base. I countersunk the holes so that the screw heads would be set below the surface of the runner. And then I added some 20mm drywall screws to secure the runners to the sled base. I'd used some pine salvaged from an old bed frame to make the fences for the sled. I cut two pieces to the same width as the sled base. To shape the main fence, I first marked a line down the centre of the workpiece. Then I made a mark to indicate where the saw blade would be, followed by two marks 10cm away from that blade mark on both sides. And then I marked up a shape for the fence. Having handles either side of the centre should prevent my hands getting anywhere near the blade. I cut out the shape on the bandsaw. And then did some shaping on the belt sander. I rounded over the top edges of the fence on the router table, unfortunately I didn't film that part. Then I sanded those roundovers by hand. Next I could place the sled onto the table saw, turn the saw on and raise the blade up through the base. I carefully added a clamp holding the fence flush to the back edge of the base and I could then check that the fence was at a perfect right angle to the base. Then from underneath I could drill a pilot hole, countersink the hole and then add a long screw to secure the fence on one side.
I checked for squareness again and that looked good. So now I had one side of the fence secured, I'd need to secure the other side really accurately to ensure that the fence would be at a perfect right angle to the blade. So I raised the blade again and used my framing square pushed right up to it, making sure that it wasn't touching the tips of the blade cutter, which were a bit wider than the actual blade itself. Then I could slide the sled back and carefully add a clamp, again checking for squareness to the sled base. I secured that side down and checked again that the fence was square to the blade and to the base and it all looked good. So I secured the fence with two more screws from underneath, making sure not to put any screws level with where the blade would cut. The placement of the back fence really didn't need to be accurate, it's really just there to add rigidity to the sled, but I set it in place with a framing square lined up to the blade slot anyway, and hot glued it in place temporarily before adding the screws. Then I could cut the blade slots in both the back and the front fences. I added some lubricating wax to the base and the runners of the sled to help it glide more easily. I let the wax set for a couple of hours and then buffed it with a cotton cloth. To test the sled for accuracy I used the five cut method, which is where you make five cuts, rotating the workpiece each time by 90 degrees. On the fifth cut, you keep the off cut and measure the width of it at each end. My off cut measured exactly 17 millimeters at one end and 17.15 millimeters at the other end. So the difference between those figures is 0.15 of a millimeter and by dividing 0.15 by four means my error margin is 0.037 millimeters. And that is accurate enough for me. Finally, I added some boiled linseed oil to the fences. For more information on the 5-cut method, check the link in the description box below this video.